Hi, thank you for joining us to learn more about Viking's Grand European Tour. I am delighted to bring this itinerary to you. You will be traveling for 15 days on Viking through two of the most popular rivers, the Rhine River and the Danube River. You will be going through four different countries and have 12 included guided tours on this journey. Today, I'd like to take you in the direction from Amsterdam to Budapest. However, you can go from Budapest to Amsterdam. I love to show the map and how the rivers sit on this map. You can see Amsterdam and Budapest anchoring this itinerary. However, I did want to make sure you took note to Prague. Prague is very conveniently located to this itinerary. So I do encourage you consider our three-night Prague extension whether that's a pre or post extension. I also want you to take note to the rivers, starting with Amsterdam, going on the Rhine River, heading to the Main River, to the Main Danube Canal, and then to the Danube River. A fantastic way to get the most of your journey and experience both of those rivers. To start in Amsterdam where you will definitely have the opportunity to explore this elegant city which was born in the Dutch Golden Age and I highly recommend that you tour this city through the city's famous glass-topped boats. You can travel throughout the canals there are over 165 of them and it spans about 31 miles and also you'll see many bridges over 1200 bridges. In addition to the bridges and the canals you will also see the beautiful gate houses and the gilded mansions. I would also encourage if you're deciding to go during tulip season to visit the Kukinoff Gardens. Tulip season is at the end of March, April, and early May and you will have the opportunity to go to what is considered the Garden of Europe. In addition to the Kukinoff Gardens, I highly recommend going to the Museum District where you'll be able to head over to the Rijksmuseum or to the Van Gogh Museum. You can also consider going to the Anne Frank House and I do encourage that the reservations are made in advance. In the morning, we will be setting sail to Kinderdijk, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was built in the 18th century, and there are 19 windmills, which is the largest concentration of windmills in the Netherlands. And of course, this network of windmills was there for flood management. What makes this tour so fascinating is not only will you see the windmills from the outside, but you will have the opportunity to tour the windmills on the inside and see living quarters. The living quarters were in their time um, manned by the windmill master and the windmill master's family, so it's really quite neat. You can also choose to do an optional tour out to a Dutch farm and learn a little bit about Dutch cheese making. But don't worry, if you don't do that, we will have a sampling of delicious Dutch cheeses taking place on board our vessel while we're watching a presentation on the Dutch Golden Age. Our next port of call will be Cologne. Cologne is Germany's fourth largest city. We will have a fabulous walking tour. We dock right there in the heart of Cologne, and you can see from this image how gorgeous the beautiful Dom is. The Dom is Cologne's iconic cathedral. It is done in a Gothic type of architecture. You will have the opportunity to do a walking tour, learn all about the Dom and go into the Dom. Uh, and also you will have the opportunity to see the streets of Cologne. We do spend a day here. So in the afternoon, if you would like to take some free time, the program director can guide you and you can go back into Cologne or you can join us for an optional tour. One of them having the opportunity to go into the spires of the cathedral. In the afternoon, you will also have the opportunity if you like to tour palaces to go to the Brühl UNESCO Palace. This is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This palace is known for the phenomenal gardens that surround it, but also you will have the opportunity to tour inside the palace. You can uh, see the really extravagant chambers and decorated rooms, and it's really quite lovely, and then you will return to the ship. 
In the evening, we do have something super fun, which is Cologne Spirited Beer Cultural Tour, where you'll have the opportunity to sample Kolsch beer. This is a light, crisp beer. It is brewed here in Cologne, and there are many different versions of it. So we will take you to a few brew houses, and then we will enjoy a fabulous brew house dinner here in Cologne. Koblenz is our next city that we're going to be visiting, and it is a traditional German country town. It's at the confluence of the Rhine and the Moselle rivers. It was founded more than 2,000 years ago. You will have a walking tour if you choose this included tour here in Koblenz. You will meet your guide at the city's famed German corner, and then you will actually have an opportunity to walk the beautiful cobblestone streets, and the guide will point out all of the influences from ancient Rome to the Middle Ages to the Napoleonic era. Another option for you is the Ern Breinstein Fortress. You'll be taking a cable car all the way up to the top of the fortress. We also have an opportunity to go to Marksburg Castle. I have been to Marksburg Castle and it's fascinating. It's quite hard to find a castle from the Middle Ages, the 13th century, that you can tour inside. But here at Marksburg Castle, you do have the opportunity to tour the castle inside and the grounds, and of course, again, have the most beautiful views of the Rhine Valley. We'll be now traveling to the Franconian town of Miltenberg on the Main River. So we're leaving the Rhine River, going to the Main River. This is a very lively and romantic river. It's nestled amongst Germany's fine wine producing regions. The morning is spent sailing along the beautiful Main River and it'll wind its way through the Spessart region, which is home to the actual snow white. We'll also have a fun glass blowing demonstration on board. So I do encourage you to enjoy and take part in the live demonstration. After lunch, we will actually stop in Miltenberg, which is known for its beautiful half-timbered homes and Germany's oldest inn. We will take Miltenberg by foot, and it is a really nice, intimate way to get to know one of Germany's most delightful riverside towns. And you also have a chance to catch a quick glimpse of Miltenberg Castle, which was built also in the 13th century, and uh, it's absolutely stunning. On day six, we're going to be heading to Würzburg, which was very heavily damaged in World War II. Würzburg has since been completed and restored. It is a prestigious university city filled with a lot of Baroque architecture. This morning you'll have the opportunity to go to the Würzburg's Bishop's Inn, um, which is one of Germany's largest and most ornate palaces. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is going to be your included tour and here's a few pictures of the lovely frescoes that will be found inside the Würzburg Bishop's residence. If you'd like, you can climb the Würzburg Hills. We have a wonderful hike as well. If you're feeling a little active that morning, you can see how beautiful that hike is and how stunning it is to go into the hillside. Next up, we're going to be continuing along the Mine Danube Canal this morning, and we're going to be arriving in the lovely Bamberg in the early afternoon. Here we'll have a wonderful walking tour of Bamberg, which is also a medieval city, and it was founded in 902, and of course, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's really neat because your walking tour will include a visit to the magnificent 11th century cathedral, which is reworked in late Romanesque style in the 13th century, and then and also the picturesque city hall. So if you look at the picture here, you will notice the city hall, which is in the middle of the bridge. And it's really quite an interesting spot to have a city hall, um, but it's lovely. And we will cap our tour off with some distinctive smoke flavored beer before returning on the boat. The monks produced the beer. There was a fire in Bamberg and they continued to drink the beer with a smoked flavor. So hence Bamberg is noted and um, for having delicious smoked flavored beer.
On day eight, we're going to be heading to Nuremberg. This city was nearly destroyed in World War II, and yet it still has its remaining medieval city walls, which stretch over three miles. You're going to meet your guide at the ship, and then we're going to delve right into Nuremberg's very complex past. It's a medieval city that's surrounded by 14th century walls, and there's a lot of gates and watchtowers that are fully intact. It grew into a toy-making capital of Europe, where craftsmen also shaped metal into inspiring sculptures and carved wood and other materials into decorative crafts. However, on this tour, your highlights will be going out to the Zeppelin fields. Um, this is the Nazi grounds where all the rallies were held and staged uh, in the 1930s. And then you'll also pass the Palace of Justice. And then you will end your tour um, at the castle with the opportunity to uh, be able to walk uh, and enjoy the market and what Nuremberg is very much known for, which is its gingerbread. This is a picture of the Palace of Justice. This you'll be passing by, or you can choose to do the Nuremberg and World War II optional tour. I have done this tour myself, and it is fascinating because you'll have the opportunity to head out to the Zeppelin Field. You'll also go to the Document Center, which is truly a place where you'll learn all about Nazi propaganda. Then head to the Palace of Justice. If the courtroom is open for us, we will have the opportunity meaning there's not any court being held, to actually go into the courtroom and learn all about the Nuremberg war crime trials. And then, of course, afterwards, you'll have the opportunity to go back into Nuremberg and um, walk the streets, go to the market, and, of course, get your gingerbread so you can take that home to your loved ones. Next up, we're heading to one of my favorite cities, which is Regensburg. We'll arrive there in midday, and we're going to see this amazing UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is a very well-preserved medieval city that was untouched in World War II, which is fantastic. It's the oldest city on the Danube, and not only is it the oldest city that has uh, fantastic 13th and 14th century, beautiful partition houses, and St. Peter's Cathedral, but also it is the home of the oldest sausage kitchen in Germany, and you will have the opportunity if you choose to enjoy some delicious sausage from this restaurant. We'll have a fabulous walking tour that's included on the Grand European Tour. Alternatively, you can head out to Munich and spend a full day in Munich. Uh, this would be a great opportunity to, for you to go see the capital of Bavaria. It is a full day tour and it is filled with culture and history all in Munich. In Passau, which is on day 10, we're going to uh, arrive in the morning. This city is known as the city of three rivers. It's where the Inn, the Ilts, and the Danube River meet. We're going to have a fabulous walking tour here. The town has very narrow cobblestone streets, uh, a beautiful square where there's the most amazing St. Stephen's Cathedral. This is a very ornate church. It's one of Europe's churches that houses the largest pipe organ, over 17,000 pipes. You'll have the opportunity to go into St. Stephen's Cathedral, listen to a concert. It's absolutely fabulous and so moving. I happen to love Passau as just a wonderful city. The streets are just fabulous. So do the extra shopping, maybe take in a coffee uh, along the streets and you will certainly enjoy all the colorful buildings and the history behind Passau that you'll learn on your walking tour. An optional tour for you is to go out to Salzburg where you can see the city of Mozart and the sound of music. It is so picturesque Salzburg and we will be out there where you'll be spending the entire day. You're learning all about the beloved film, the sound of music, and the birthplace of Mozart. So he did not indeed, he was not born in Vienna, although he did spend most of his time in Vienna. The other 
another thing that you'll be enjoying while you're in Salzburg is Austria's oldest restaurant and you'll be able to have some lunch there but of course while you're dining and having lunch there you'll be listening to some classically trained singers and musicians that will serenade you with songs and the spirit of course of the sound of music. Now heading out to Milk, where we'll be going to Milk Abbey. This is um, all in the, a very important wine growing region. Uh, and you'll see as you're traveling on the Danube River, beautiful picturesque villages, hilltop castles. We'll be heading uh, to Milk, which lies at the confluence of the Danube and the Milk River. And it's at the base of the Vakel Valley. We'll have the opportunity to go into the 900 year old Benedictine Abbey. You can see it is a masterpiece of Baroque architecture and inside the gorgeous, stunning frescoes, the beautiful staircase that everybody is so fascinated with. The actual abbey sits high above the cliffs and has a wonderful view of the Blue Danube. And having the opportunity to experience these 900 year old abbeys in this region is really quite amazing. Uh, it is known now um, to be a library and it is a home to a wide range of medieval manuscripts. We're going to be sailing through the Vakau Valley. This is vineyards, beautiful emerald green rolling hills, charming towns, castles, and you can see how stunning the topography is of this region. This is perhaps the most celebrated area of the Danube, the Vakau Valley, and also is deemed a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You'll also have an opportunity to experience a Vakau Valley winery. This is where a lot of white wines were made. The Gruner grape is a very popular grape of this region. So you will enjoy a wine tasting experience, a fully guided tour, and we encourage that as an optional experience for you. And now we're heading to the fabulous city of Vienna, the city that's known as the city of waltzes. This is Austria's capital city, and it's Europe's center of classical music. Strauss and Mozart composed so many of their finest pieces here in Vienna, and today you will take an included tour of the capital. We'll ride along the Ringstrasse, or you can choose to take a walking tour into the city. So you can do uh, enter the city by motor coach or by a walking tour. And the Ringstrasse actually used to be the city walls, but the city walls were replaced with this uh, beautiful road uh, where you'll see some of the most beautiful beautiful Baroque architecture and also have the opportunity to see uh, the world famous Opera House here in Vienna, St. Stephen's Cathedral and Hofburg Palace. After touring the city, we will take you back to the ship for lunch if you choose and your program director as well as uh, guest services can help you go back into the city if you want to tour on your own. However, there are so many amazing alternatives for you to choose to do in the afternoon. We have a tour behind the scenes at Lippens and Her Stallions. This is the elegant Spanish riding school that was commissioned, of course, by the Habsburgs. And and it is right there in the former Imperial Palace. In the evening, we have a Mozart and Strauss concert. This is a beautiful classical experience where they were performing for us in period costumes. And you have the opportunity to go into a historic venue and witness this period all come to life as the costume singers, in my case, a violinist that was absolutely amazing, 
uh, performs for you and there was also some dancing uh, and so I highly encourage you to consider taking that optional tour. Shonbun Palace is one of my favorite optional tours here in uh, Vienna. You'll have the opportunity to go to one of the most magnificent homes of the Habsburg dynasty. This is where Maria Theresa fell in love with this uh, home that was a hunting lodge, but then she decided she was going to make it even more impressive, and believe it or not, it is often referred to as a mini Versailles. And last but not least, we are now at the last port of call, which is the Danube River. The Danube River divides Hungary's capital. It used to be the Buddha side and the Pest side, and it, over the last few decades, became Budapest, and it is one of the continent's most iconic cities. You will absolutely love it, and this city lights up at night. So here you will enjoy a tour with a local tour guide. It'll be a panoramic tour that you'll begin in the modern Pesh side. You'll have the opportunity to go to the elegant Andrasi Avenue, which is like the Champs Elysees of Budapest, as well as drive through Hero Square, which is a monument that is filled with monuments and plazas. On the Buddha side, it's really quite neat because you'll go across the river, the two sides were connected by the lovely chain bridge. So the sights that you will see from the Buddha side overlooking the Danube River to the Pesh side, you can see the picture here how stunning the parliament looks and you'll also have some great views of the chain bridge from here um, as well as while you're on the Buddha side, you will be touring the Fisherman's Bastion, the Matthias's Church. You also may have the opportunity to go to the Royal Palace and the most magnificent views of the Pesh side. Your tour here on the Grand European Tour will conclude and you'll be then moving on to your extension or flying home. Our extensions on the Grand European Tour include two nights in Budapest. You can also do the three nights in Prague, uh, which I do highly recommend while you're in this region. We also have two nights in Amsterdam, and uh, we also have The Hague and Amsterdam. And when you join us on an extension, your hotel is included as well as your transfers. So that is an important note for you to make. So once again, thank you so much for enjoying this presentation hopefully just as much as I enjoyed presenting it to you we appreciate all of you for listening in and learning more about the Grand European Tour uh, thank you to our travel advisors and to all of our passengers and we look forward to seeing you on board Viking <music>